crafters, it's Julie Creek from Creek Bank Creations. I'm excited to be with you here today to share with you a brand new product. I know you're shocked, like where's Tom? He's here, but he's the silent partner today. And you were like, I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> so here's what we've got. We've got this new product. It is called the Envelope Please. And this is like no other product that we have ever produced. This started out with, um, I had a lot of customers asking me for a die to cut a standard A2 envelope. And um, I started doing a lot of research and what I discovered was that, um, to my knowledge, there, is, there isn't anyone who produces that die that fits in a standard die cut machine. And when I say standard, talking about the width of the machine. So a big shot or most of the standard machines on the market today or are around six inches wide, a little bit smaller than that. And what we need is a die in order to make this envelope that fits in that opening. And I've done that with this set. So I started messing around with the envelope and one thing led to another. So I wanna open this for you because I want you to see when you buy it, it's going to look exactly like this and you're gonna to need to take it out of the sleeve and then what you're going to find is that we have packaged that all for you in this really nice storage envelope so that it all stores together. When you open it up, you are going to find, of course, all of your dies inside. So what you have is your um, display sheet there and what you will find will be several pages of instructions on how to make the various cards that are that you are able to make with this set. The instructions include color pictures and full instructions and I have included in the back a, di a full diagram of the dies that are in the set explaining what each of those dies are. So that is all included in the set and then you will find um, two cards of dies that are in the set and there are so many 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 creative ways to use this set i'm excited to be able to share that with you today we are going to learn how to make and construct the basic envelope Next, we will make the horizontal flap card. I'll teach you what dies you need to use out of that set, and we'll construct this card. Next, we will learn about the vertical flap card. There are special dies in the set to enable you to make this fun flap card, and that tucks right in to the front. So this is a really creative card. The last card that we will create will involve the embossing die and the tiny envelope that are included in your set. I will explain how these work and you will see how much fun it is to create with these. Get that up there where you can see it. The little one is just a little bit of magic and this is the one we're gonna to learn to use today. So we are going to turn the camera down. I will place a complete supply list in the description below. So if you see products that you like, you'll find those in the description below. Let's turn the camera down and get started. I'm so glad you decided to join us as we've turned the camera down. The first thing we're going to work on is the standard A2 envelope. And this is designed so that you can cut this in a regular die cut machine, which means like a big shot. And you do need to make the envelope, you do need the extended cutting pad. So it's, a, it's long, but it will fit in your machine. So we are going to learn how to make this fun project. Now when you open your package, you are going to find this diagram. And the diagram includes the layout of all of the dies. What we're going to work on today in the beginning here is this piece right here. And this is telling you what you need to cut an envelope. You need that large base piece. You need each of the flaps. 
and you need the envelope liner if you would like to create a liner for your envelope. Now you don't have to, that is optional, but you do want to die cut these pieces and I like to cut these pieces from cardstock. I have die cut my pieces and I am ready to assemble and I just want to show you I die cut these pieces and then I use my pen to mark it so that you could see when you die cut these two flap pieces there are score marks on there and those score marks are telling you where the tape goes. So the very first thing we're going to do is put tape down this row right here. That's the inside row and then we will not put tape out here yet. So we're only doing on the inside. So let's go ahead and put our tape on. Once I have my tape on, I'm going to train that fold. So I have a nice fold on both pieces. And then we will be ready to attach these two pieces to the base. So I have my base piece. I'm going to train the folds on my base and I know that the top edge has that square corner because that makes it easy to put tape on. So the square edge is the top. We're going to train this fold and then we are going to take each of the flaps and adhere them. Once I'm ready to adhere the flaps, I'm going to set my flaps so that I have my tape side down and then we will adhere the flaps right into the side of the card. So I will remove the tape liner and I'm going to set that right in the center of that envelope base and right on the edge and then push that down. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once we have our flaps adhered, we want to think about if we're going to add that liner to our card. I have previously cut the liner. I'm going to score it and we will set that in the top. Now I have found it best to use very long runs of tape for this all the way across so I will remove the tape liner and we will adhere that into the card. You will want to center that on there and get your fold to line up. Push that down and then you'll have that beautiful opening for your card. Very nice touch. Now let's go back to those flaps. Remember we had those flaps and if we look at our little prototype over here we see there's that horizontal score line just about halfway through in the middle of that piece on both sides. That is placed there so that you know when you put your adhesive on your envelope you're going to put that from that score line to the bottom. We do not want tape at the top. I have my tape. Let's remove the tape liner and shut the card. And now I have just created my custom A2 envelope that I can send a beautiful greeting to someone and really nice it's just a really pop a nice pop of color and when you go to close that you can use your tape right across that edge close it up and you have a really nice card now if you're sending a I'm sorry you have a really nice envelope if you're sending this um, you can use the white gel pen to um, address your darker colored envelopes so that is your very first project with the envelope please and that is your A2 card envelope. We are ready to make the horizontal flap card and all of the papers that we're using today come from the Feeling Blue collection and this is designed specifically with plaids on one side and floral on the other. So this gives you the ability to make male cards or female cards. Um, just, it's just a really good collection. The um, stamp that I'm using today is from the Happy Mothers collection. And we are, this particular card is the birthday card. 
but we are going to make a Mother's Day card too. So this is the Happy Mother's Sentiment Stamp. It's a new stamp for us. So we're going to work with that today. As we get ready to construct our card, you can refer to your instructions on page three and you'll see that what we need are two dies to make that flat piece die number five as per this instructions and die eight and you can also refer to the other diagram to see that it's on there as well. So what we want to do in the very beginning is start with a base of cardstock. And we are going to cut our cardstock 12 by 4.25. We will score on the long side at 2.5 and 8. Now I have previously completed that task and so we are going to fold that and we'll have our base card. The next step, you will cut your pattern paper. You need two pieces of pattern paper. Both of them are four inches tall. You need one four by 2.25 and one four by 3.75. And we will remove the tape and adhere this to the card base. We will put the larger piece on the right and the smaller piece on the left. Now I did pay attention when I cut this and watched my pattern to make sure that I had my pattern lined up correctly. Now you are going to need to take that die, that larger die, and we're going to die cut that and you will see when you die cut this that there are little X's all the way across on this top. I'm going to flip this over and show you the reason the X's are there is because that is where we're going to put tape. Now that is a double, I have a double score line on there. Just to help you um, fold that over the top, it gives you a little extra wiggle room. Now we're also going to cut that other piece. This is your mat that goes in the top. And I have previously stamped the Happy Mother's Day sentiment on there. I'm going to remove the tape liner and adhere this to the top. And this is an optional step. You don't have to include it, but it really looks nice. Got our piece right there. Now to complete our card, we are going to adhere this. Before I put my top piece on, I am going to add the inside element so that I have that done. I have previously die cut this with our large stitched rectangle die and I have previously stamped with the stamp. Now you could also cut this by hand and this piece would measure 4 by 5.25. So I have centered that on the inside of my card. We have a really attractive card. We are going to align this over the top and adhere that to the back. So I will remove the tape liner and then adhere that to the back of the card. Press that down into the tape and then I have that fold over on the top and I just have that really nice unique presentation. Now I love this card because of the fact that we've got the plaid and then we're going to add the flowers to it. I just think that's just a really nice touch. These flowers are cut with the funky flowers die. I'm not going to take the time to do that today, but it's just a really nice piece for it. Now on the back, we do have that where it's um, pieced together on the back where you have the two pieces. If that bothers you, you could put a piece of pattern paper over it, but as you can see, it hardly shows at all. Now one of the great things that I would do when I send this card is I would die cut our card stand die. This particular die uses a very small piece of paper and it fits exactly behind the card. So when you put it in the envelope, the customer or your friend has it and they can fold this and it gives your card a beautiful presentation. 
Nice little presentation there. So that is the card stand die. It is not included, but it's a great one to have in your collection. I'm excited to show you how this looks when it's all finished. You have the three-way flap, and I did add that pattern paper on the inside. If you have extra paper, that sure is a nice pop of color, and those dimensions would be the same as the outside. So we've created two projects. Let's move on to number three. We are ready to create the vertical flap card. We're going to start with the basic A2 card. We're going to add that flap on the side. We're going to create this fun card. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at on your instruction sheet. It'll tell you which of the dies you need and you'll need to pull those dies and those are the ones that we're using. Again, you could also refer to the master diagram. To get started on our card, the first thing we're going to do is start with our A2 card and fold that. And then we are going to add that flap, the same flap that we used on the top, we're gonna to pull over and we're going to adhere on the side. Now you'll notice my card has stamped on it and I have previously stamped this with the envelope floral stamp set. This set is designed with two sentiment areas, one that says congratulations and one that says happy, happy, happy and is specifically designed for you to put on that flap of your card. So we are going to train that fold from the score and add tape where the X's are, just like we did last time. I have my adhesive over here on the right, and I am going to place that right on my card base and adhere it. The inside of this card has the happy birthday sentiment. I have previously stamped that on this white panel. Again, from that stitched rectangle die, we're going to put it in there. Now, I took the die that is the mat for this, and I have die cut this so that the die is on the inside so we can have count your can or um, don't count your candles just enjoy the glow and happy birthday on this. So I will put adhesive on this and adhere it. I have my tape on there. I am going to add just a little bit of liquid glue on this point because we are going to be placing that point in the slit on the front of the card and I don't want that paper peeling up. So just add a little bit of liquid just to give it really good grip and place it on your card. We've completed our inside and now we need to work on that outside piece. So you will want to locate the die that allows you to cut this piece and you'll want to die cut that on your pattern paper of choice. Now what I want to point out to you is that the slit is not in the center, it is offset. So you'll want to set this up so that you have 1.75 inches on the left and 2.125 inches on the right. When you adhere this, you need to make sure that that is how you're adhering it. So line it up. This is my um, little cheat that I keep with my set so that I remember when I go to adhere this that I have it set up properly and that I have it on the card front correctly. So once I know that I have the pieces correct, I'm going to remove the tape and we're going to center that on the card front. I have now adhered this to the card front and I have that tuck point for my card. Now we could just leave it like this or we can get creative with it. And you know, we're gonna get creative, right? So in your set, you have a heart die and what I have done is I have die cut four of these and stacked them up together so it's pretty heavy and I've stamped don't count your candles on here and I have added a piece of foam tape up here on the corner and I use the red liner so that you could see it because what we'll do is flip that over and put that right on top and we want to be able to be able to get that flap in and out 
So we are going to use some foam tape for that. Now I have removed the liner and I'm going to flip that over and we're going to center that on the card. And what I want to challenge you with is you don't have to use the heart. There are many other items that you could put on there. Like maybe you want to put a squash them on there. You could do something different. So now you have that really cool card that opens and you have your card tucked right back into that flap and you've just created the third project in the Envelope Please series. We are ready for the last series that we're going to do here tonight with the Envelope Please and we are going to be working with the embossing die that comes with this set and the mini envelope. So those are the two that we're going to be using. And if you have the, your instruction sheet there, you'll see that's um, on page five. So these are just really fun cards. I'm going to show you how to work with these tonight. So many creative, fun ideas that you can do with the little envelopes. And I just wanna share with you tonight how to set them up and how to work with them. This is um, the tiny block alphabet. It fits perfect in there with the mini graduation pieces. This is the card we're going to do tonight. So what I want you to see is if you take a look at your instruction sheet. So you wanna find your setup sheets. Those can be found on page six and seven on your printed insert. And all of these work the same. I'm going to work with this one today um, but they're all the same, and you'll see after we get going here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I would get a piece of acetate, and I am using our medium weight acetate, and I am cutting that the same size as the rectangle that's on there. So you would be cutting that 0.25 by 4, and then you're going to take a Sharpie and trace that outside edge of the die. And it's easiest, actually, if you just take the die, set it on there, and trace. And then you'll have a pattern set up so that design will be centered directly on the inside of the card. So if I want to use this, I am going to take my acetate, put a piece of double stick tape right in the middle, and then I am going to place my die right in the middle. I have previously die cut the card front that we're going to use. I am using the Just a Note to Say stamp, and it's got little sentiments on there that are perfect for the little envelope. So I am going to take my piece of acetate, and I'm going to set that right on top of my card and I want to make sure that it isn't going to shift when I run it through my die cut machine. So I'm just going to put some tape on there. That's our stencil tape. And then run it through the die cut machine. When I'm done, I'm just going to give myself a little dot of undo to loosen up that tape so I don't tear my cardstock. We're going to pull that off. A lot of pressure when we run through that die cut machine. So we just want to make sure we're not tearing it up. Then when we pull that off, what we'll see is that we have our embossed pattern in that card and then we're ready to just start building our card. So we are going to flip this over, put tape on the back and adhere that to the card front. Once we have that adhered to the card front, we can go ahead and die cut our little mini envelope and we are going to put that together. Now you will find in this set, there is a long rectangle dot, this piece. And I created this so that you would have the exact width of paper that goes on that in that envelope. I don't think you're probably going to use it in that long width length very often, but that is the actually the correct width for the envelope. So I have die cut that and I've cut it to 1.75 inches in length and I've stamped, I've stamped happy birthday to you on there. Now we need to adhere that little envelope shut. So what I like to do is take a little scrap of paper 
I'm going to slide my scrap of paper into the envelope, push those two things down, and I'm going to give myself a little dot of liquid glue right there. And we do not need very much glue. I'm going to take my media stick and I am going to put a very small line of glue right on that edge, right along that edge. If you don't have a media stick, you can use a, you know, you could try your pick tool. Um, media stick's just super handy to do. And then when I push this down, I'm going to hold that for about 10 seconds. Then I can remove that little scrap of paper. It's caught all the excess glue and throw that away. And I am ready to adhere that to my card. Now we have our little sentiment that I have already stamped. And what I like to do is just put a small piece of adhesive on the bottom of that and then slide that down in my card, however deep I want to put it, and stick it down. Then we will add our adhesive to the back of our envelope and we will adhere that to the card. The finishing touch on this card will be the little hearts that are on this and you will find in your set there there is a really nice set of hearts that you can die cut i have die cut this with our glitter paper and i have my super tacky tape on the back so we will peel the liner off and add those little hearts and you may have noticed in my happy flappy video on the inside of some of those cards, I added a little glitter heart, and those were cut from this die set. A little handy set because they graduate in size, and they are meant for exactly this purpose. We are ready to do the fifth card. I was going to do this in a separate video, but I decided to go ahead and just film it and add it to what we've got here. So we're going to learn how to make the interactive scrolling paper envelope card. If you have your instructions, you will see there are actually written instructions for this, and that would be on page eight and page nine. Now to get started, we're going to start with that basic A2 card. You remember that's cutting a piece of paper 8.5 by 5.5 and scoring at 4.25. Now we do need a front for our card and we're going to cut that piece of paper 5.25 by four. I have used our stitch rectangle die and I have die cut that so it has that beautiful stitched edge. Now I wanted to have a really nice highlight area in the center to put the envelope on. So I'm going to cut another rectangle to put that panel right down the middle. And if you wanna just cut that on a piece of cardstock, you could cut that 4.25 by three. I wanted to have a really nice scalloped edge on this. So I used the mini scallop rectangle die set and I used the third largest die in the set and I cut that from the blue cardstock. Now you may notice that the mini scallop rectangle that I cut is larger than the floral paper in the background. So I am going to take that piece of cardstock and I'm going to go back and get that stitched rectangle die, the one we used in the very beginning, and I'm going to tape that in place. I will adhere this to the paper with stencil tape, and I'm going to run that through the die cut machine, and that will give me an exact fit. We're going to just use a little undo there to remove that die, make sure that stencil doesn't tear it, the stencil tape doesn't tear it, and then we have our piece, and you will notice that it will fit exactly on the front panel of that card. 
Now I am going to adhere that to that base. I'm going to adhere the cardstock to the pattern paper and I need to center it. So if you have a jig and I keep a jig is what I use. If I'm going to make a card over and over and there's a measurement involved, then I make a jig and I keep it in the storage pocket. So I've made a jig here that tells me I have one and an eighth inch on each side. And if I put this on the other side, I can make sure that that is centered. So I am going to put tape on the back and adhere. I have my adhesive on the back and I'm just going to use that jig, line everything up, and you'll see I have that centered on my panel wonderfully. The next step is cutting that slit in the base of the card. So I am going to use this die from the set and you'll see on your instruction sheet that's marked as number one. And we are going to take, and you can for now just ignore the uh, stencil tape that I have on here. We're going to lay the die right on top of the paper directly. We want to line it up directly and then we are going to take stencil tape and hold that in place. I like to use two pieces of stencil tape, one on the top and one on the bottom. We do not want it shifting and we are going to run that through the die cut machine. Now we are running through two layers of paper so you may want to run this through your machine several times. We will use a little undo to release that tape so that we don't tear up our card and we will pull that off and what we have here is our slit. Now you can see from mine the first layer came out really easy and that second layer is partially cut. Now that popped right out. If it's not cut all the way through you can take your X-Acto knife and just go over that to make sure that you have that back piece out because you do have those two pieces of paper there and that will give you the slit that you need. The next thing you want to do is locate your mini envelope die and we want to die cut that mini envelope. What we need to do is get this slit onto this envelope. So what I recommend that you do is take the die and die cut a piece of acetate that you can see through lay that on top of your die so that you can get alignment and then use the stencil tape to mark where that goes and what you want to do when you do this setup is make sure that you're aligned top to bottom the way that you want it and then I'm just leaving that stencil tape on there so that when I go back in anytime I want to use it I only have to lay my paper in that pattern and I'm ready to go. I'm going to secure this in place with some stencil tape and run it through the die cut machine. We will use the undo to release that stencil tape and pull our envelope off. If you aren't familiar we do have stencil tape. This is a low adhesive, uh, low tack adhesive that I use for holding our dies in place, stencils, and I use it for all kinds of projects like this. It works perfect. So I have created the mini envelope with the slit in it. Now we are going to train the folds on this and you will see that is just about an exact little fit there. Now when we fold this we're going to leave that pointy piece at the top. We're not going to fold that down. We're going to fold the sides in and we are going to fold the bottom up, but we are not folding that top fold. We don't need it. So we've created our envelope and now we're ready to work with our paper. You will find in the die set this long rectangle die and this die has been made because it is the perfect size paper width for your envelope. I actually just took this and cut about 10 of these and stuck them in a pocket and then I store that with my dies. This is the um, stamp and die storage pocket. So I just keep a bunch of those ready to go. And then what you're going to want to do for this particular project 
is cut that down so that it's only 2.5 inches long. So put it in your paper trimmer and trim it off. The next thing you'll want to do is add some text. What do you want to say on your little message? Write that down and what you'll want to remember is that you want to stay on the top portion of this particular note. You don't want any text at the bottom. So your text should fill up the top 1.5 inches of the card. If you go too low, it'll end up not showing at all. So we're going to fill up 1.5 inches. Then we're going to add a piece of foam tape to the bottom. We are not ever going to remove the foam liner from this tape. You'll want to write your message on your note and I want to encourage you to use your handwriting and don't stress about the fact that it's absolutely perfect. This is a great thing to send someone and the fact that you spent the time to do it with your handwriting is meaningful. I wrote on mine Isaiah 26.3 it's actually been my scripture for the year. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast because they trust in you. Now what we're going to do is take our envelope and we are going to adhere that envelope right over the slit on our card. So I am going to turn this to the back side and I am going to place tape on the back and you'll want to be sure to get that tape right close to both edges of the slit. It will help with the friction that's going to happen. And remember, that's going all the way up. That top piece, this pointy part right here, is going to be adhered to the card. So we're going to put adhesive up there as well. You want to get quite a bit of adhesive on this because it's going to be taking a lot of pressure. So I've got my tape on there. Now when I get ready to align this, I am going to take my undo, and I'm just gonna put some undo on there just so that I have time to align that. Undo will give us time to align that exactly where we need to have it aligned. Now it looks like to me, you'll want to get right over the top of it. it, looks like to me that I've got it aligned. You'll want to pull those two sides in and make sure that you don't have anything sticking out. And I am going to pull this ever so slightly to the right because I see a little bit of notch or slit hanging out there. And then make sure I have it straight, I have it done. And then you're going to push it down and adhere it in place. So I have the top flap and I have these side flaps in the back and the top is stuck down. I'm going to pick up my card and I'm going to pick up my note and I'm going to take my note and slide it in through the slit so that I have the ability to pull that in and out and I'm going to set that just like that. I will get my foam tape ready. I'm going to turn this whole entire thing over and we are going to place foam tape on this. Now what I want to be sure to point out to you is that as you add foam tape you want to make sure that your piece of paper is not coming in contact with the foam tape. So you can see there, I have my foam running all along there, and this piece of paper is not coming in contact with the foam. Let's go all the way around. I have removed the liner from my foam tape. I did add these two other pieces because this card is actually going out to the show, and my show cards take a lot of abuse, so we added a little extra foam there. So what I am ready to do is to turn this card over and adhere it to the card front. And I am making sure that that piece of paper is not coming in contact with that foam tape. And because I am not an expert, I'm going to take my undo and I'm going to give myself a line of undo all the way around this card. 
So even an experienced crafter such as myself um, sometimes has trouble winding things up. So if we have our undo down there, that gives us the chance to line that up perfectly. And I'm going to push that down and I will have adhered that and you will see, yay, <laughs> we have our words there ready to go. Now we need to deal with that little envelope and we need to seal it shut. I want to share with you the easiest way to seal this envelope. I have a scrap piece of paper. I'm going to set that scrap piece of paper in and I'm going to fold up those two little flaps and then I'm going to take the liquid glue and give myself a little bitty dot of liquid glue and then I'm going to take the media stick and I'm just going to put adhesive on the edge of that envelope. We do not need very much adhesive and really we only need it on the top edge. I'm going to flip this tool over, let you get a closer look at it. Let me wipe it off. This is the media stick that has the notched out edge on it and you can see you can just slide it along there and just get the adhesive where you want it. Then I'm going to fold that closed. I'm going to hold that for about 10 seconds. When my time is up, I'm going to pull my little scrap piece of paper out and throw that away. And I will have created my interactive scrolling card. I even have room if I wanted to add a little sentiment here, I could do that. We have created five cards and an amazing A2 envelope in this series. I hope you've enjoyed this. I really um, enjoy messing with it myself. You will find clickable links below in the description for all the products that you see here today. And we sure thank you for stopping by you can find us online at www.creekbankcreations.com.